Good morning. Happy Thursday. It's time to get real. Are we ready? Oh, you guys. Okay. It's been a good couple of days. I told my my weight loss story yesterday. So if you haven't seen that, check it out. And um, it kind of walks you through my whole um, history with weight loss, weight maintenance, and um, my struggles and successes. And then also, uh, I have seen people share that. If you thought that was helpful and useful and you think, you know, there are people out there that you know that are starting New Year's resolutions for losing weight or being fit and healthy and what that actually means, share my story with them so that um, they can tune in, take a listen, and we can start this movement of knowing better and doing better when it comes to our body and our health and reaching that through our mindset. So that's what I'd like to do is, is to help you reach your most real weight loss experience and have it be one, take out all the, the, the unnecessary anguish out of losing weight. And so wouldn't that be nice? So if you think that would be helpful, please, please, please share. Um, I've got lots of new likes lately on my page and lots of new followers. I'm still posting on YouTube. Uh, so you know what? The more we just kind of are persistent in getting this out there, the more we're going to become this one big, happy, real life family. So I thank you for that. Um, part of a big part of my weight loss history is the scale. Mm -mm -mm. We've talked about the scale before a little bit more so in terms of muscle versus fat and what that number actually means. I'm not going to cover that again today. So there was a video called, um, muscle versus fat and the number you see on the scale and that you should really be getting in body scans or you know checking your body fat percentage and other numbers as opposed to just what you're seeing on the scale because the scale is not telling you the full story it's telling you what you weigh at a moment in time but it's not telling you the full story of your health and fitness and so i really encourage you to get an in-body scan and to listen to that muscle versus fat video that being said we're talking about the scale today in terms of, is the scale helpful as a gauge for your weight loss or is it hurtful as a gauge for your weight loss and um i think it can be both I think it can be both okay so first of all the definition of scale and when i looked up the definition of scale i got all these definitions about you know something on your body that blah 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 blah, or you know something on a fish you know whatever not exact didn't come up you know with what we tend to think of when we think of scale something to step on to weigh ourselves but i finally saw this one it says definition of scale an instrument or machine for weighing that is it. Simple as that. An instrument or machine for weighing. And it does not say like an inanimate object in your bathroom that you stand on daily to determine your mood and self-worth. That's not the definition of a scale. It really and truly is just a, a device for how much something or someone weighs. You know, we're so focused on our body weight we don't really think about the weight of anything else we don't why don't we weigh our food before we eat it instead of weighing our body after we eat it and um i posted that i posted that as one of the quotes this morning and then i prompted the question is the scale helpful or, hurt, or hurtful and i'd love to hear your thoughts on that so um when i was a, a weight watcher leader or coach we I did a, a whole meeting on this took a half an hour and we did a bash the scale party I brought in three or four scales body weight scales and I just people who kind of felt almost chained or um, imprisoned by the scale I'm just like come on in and I brought this one like it was like a I think it was a legit Billy Club I don't I have no idea where I got that and I let members who wanted to come up to the front of the meeting room and like take turns 
bashing the scale. And it was kind of theatrical, but kind of fun, but really quite um, symbolic of the fact that we are imprisoned by the stupid thing that we stand on every day that tells us our weight. And so I don't weigh myself daily anymore. Um, I rarely weigh myself at all. I'll get more into that in a minute. Um, but there was a time when I did weigh myself frequently and it was helpful. Okay. So is the scale helpful or hurtful? Comment on this video. That's your action step as to what you think. Okay. Is it helpful or hurtful? Um, it has been helpful for me in the past to get on the scale periodically. As long as I'm doing it in a way that simply, um, is just one tool that I was using to see if I was moving in the right direction. Okay, so I would go into Weight Watchers weekly and we would have to get weighed in in front of someone else. And having someone else do that for you is far different than standing on it by yourself, you know, naked in the bathroom every morning. Having somebody else see what you weigh, having that accountability, knowing somebody else is going to see how you did, what you ate, that can be pretty helpful in terms of staying on track. And so in the beginning, when I first started Weight Watchers, I weighed in one time per week. That was it, once a week. And I told you yesterday, I always wore the same clothes so that it took the factor of what I was wearing out of the equation, okay? So if you weigh in every week in the same clothes, it's essentially the same thing as, you know, weighing in naked every day. It's 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 consistent, okay? You're doing the same thing every week. So the reflection of what you see on the scale is um, you're taking those, those questionable factors out of it. So weigh in in the same clothes every week, okay? I would always do the same thing every week. I'd, I was I worked for Chrysler at the time. I drive right from Chrysler to the meeting room, weigh in. Um, I didn't eat before. I didn't drink before. Um, but I, I mean, I had my lunch and my water and whatever, and then I would just go and weigh in. So try to what you eat, what you wear and what you eat prior to weighing in. Um, be consistent. If you exercise or don't exercise before you weigh in, be consistent. That's really the... The only thing that matters when you're getting on the scale to gauge a number is the consistency so that there is validity to the number. OK, and you're comparing apples to apples, so to speak. So it was helpful in a tool to see weekly if I was moving in the right direction. And I didn't. And it's helpful if you're not using it as a determinant for your mood or self-worth. As long as you are you get on the scale, you know, you had a great week or um, you've been practicing all the habits you, that you need to, to practice and you get on the scale and you say, OK, all right, I get the results. Or, you know, you didn't do great that week and you step on the scale and you get not so great results. You're like, OK, I kind of know where that came from. But you don't let it determine your mood. Oh, my gosh, I'm up two pounds. That's it. I'm a horrible person. I'm going to fail. I know there's no way I can't do this. I knew I quit. I quit. I'm just going to eat a pizza right now. Mm -mm, wrong thinking. OK, so it can be helpful as long as it's one tool in your arsenal to um, see if you're moving in the right direction and then you don't let it determine your mood or self-worth or change your mood. OK, so. That's helpful. It can also be hurtful when you kind of get obsessed with it. OK, there came a time. So there was a transition in my weight loss process where I where the scale went from helpful to hurtful because I became obsessed with it. You guys, I would weigh in. I would weigh in right before I went um, or first thing when I got up in the morning, right after the shower to see if I weighed more when my hair was wet. Um, I would weigh in. Uh, before I peed, after I peed, I would weigh in um, at night. I'd weigh in in the afternoon. I'd weigh in after I ate something, before I ate something. I'd weigh in, um, you know, every single day, multiple times a day. And if, if that scale said I gained even an ounce, that's it. I went off the deep end. I just, how come this isn't working? I, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. cycle. So um, if you are obsessed with it and you use it to 
to determine whether you should be happy with yourself or unhappy with yourself, it's it's hurtful to you. So here's the reason, okay? The scale can lie to you. The scale lies. Did you know that? The scale will lie to you. When you gain, it can be a lie that you're a failure. When you gain weight on the scale and you think, oh my gosh, all right, what I'm doing is wrong. What I'm doing isn't working. Um, here's the thing. If you're actually approaching your weight loss, health, and fitness in the proper manner, you will not lose weight every single second of every single day, every single time you step on the scale. Your body, it's going to, it's going to take a while and it's going to, um, your body sometimes has a mind of its own. So you might do your part to the best of your ability, but for whatever reason, you've got a lot of other things going on in your body. Maybe you're eating the wrong foods um, and you're inflamed and not necessarily, um, you didn't gain fat, okay? Maybe you, uh, maybe it's, you know, ladies, you know what I'm talking about, that time of the month or whatever, okay? Did you actually gain fat? No. The scale is kind of lying to you that it is it, a weight gain of significance, okay? Um, so when you get on the scale and you see a gain, and you think you're a failure and you're doing it wrong, that can be a lie. Sometimes your body just isn't on your same timeline and it's gonna take a week to show up on the scale. It's gonna, like, you're sometimes a week behind and it's gonna take some time for your body to cooperate. But I promise you, if you're practicing the right behaviors, the scale will eventually to conform to, what, to where it is that you're going. It has no choice. So the scale can also lie to you when you get on there and you, and you lose. And you think you've succeeded. You think, oh, I did everything right this week. I am a rock star. Okay. So you think you're doing it correctly, but you're not because you're doing some kind of crazy deprivation diet and some kind of fad diet and some kind of restrictive diet. And you're eating 500 calories a day or only drinking shakes or following whatever fad you've heard of at the moment. And you're eating sugar free foods and fat free foods. And it's reflecting this quick fix. Okay. This immediate gratification where I get on the scale and I lose this weight and then I, that means I'm successful. I'm doing it right. Guess what? That loss is a lie. You're actually doing it wrong. Okay. You're actually taking the very wrong approach to weight loss when you are um, following some kind of restrictive, unhealthy, um, treat your body like you hate it diet. So the scale can lie to you either way. Um, you cannot let the results lie to you, okay? You need what you need in order to know that you've truly been successful is you need to master your new habits. You need to master your new habits, and that only comes with time and repetition. That is not going to come after one week of doing, you know, practicing good behaviors and stepping on the scale and seeing a little bit of a, of a loss. It doesn't happen that way, okay? Um, your new fit, healthy you, if it doesn't take time to achieve, you're probably approaching it in the wrong manner, in the quick fix manner. Let me just get this off. And then when I get there, I'm going to figure out how to keep it off. Listen to my story yesterday. Doesn't work that way. So one of my favorite, one of my favorite sayings was always the slower you go, the better you know. You need to learn something along the way. You need to learn how to have unconscious mastery of whatever it is that you're trying to achieve. And that is going to take some time. time. That is not going to change. You are not going to master something in 21 days. You can create a change in 21 days, but if you do not practice repetition um, over and over and practice and practice and practice, week after week, month after month, year after year, you are never going to master your new healthy habits that will keep the scale at the number you want. Okay, so change only sticks with conditioning and practice. So why, why do you think you can't keep it off? Why do you think that you think you've got it all figured out? The scale's been telling you that you're successful and then all of a sudden, as soon as you reach this number that you have in your head and the scale tells you you got there, 
You think that's success. You think that when this scale reads 135 pounds, it's successful. You're, you're done. You've succeeded. You've arrived. Lies. That is a lie. Okay. So you can't keep it off because you haven't learned anything. You were lying to yourself the whole way, trying to get this, you know, immediate gratification or this like, let's just get it done attitude, as opposed to approaching it from the beginning, taking it small steps and building on it and building that foundation and learning new things and then practicing that and then making that part of who you are, mastering that. Instead, you just, you know, ate celery and drank water and, you know, drank protein shakes for 10 months and you thought, mm, cool, I'm done. That wasn't so hard. And then you gain it right back. Okay. My earring just fell out. And then you gain it right back. And so that's why you can't keep it off is because you, you look at that scale to tell you the truth and it can't because it's an inanimate object that is simply t telling you what you weigh at some moment in time, but is not also telling you what you are made up of. Okay, water, muscle, fat. So uh, that unconscious mastery, what if it takes you 26 years like it took me? So let it let it be that. There you will you'll create success along the way, okay? But the, you know, we talk about that. That's just a different way of saying lifestyle change. You make an actual lifestyle change, which is what you're after. Aren't you sick of weighing yourself every single day. Do you know how often I weigh myself now? I don't. I I go through phases. When I feel myself gaining, I avoid the scale like crazy until I get to the point where it's, I'm physically uncomfortable in my clothes. <laughs> and then I start getting back on the scale, you know, or going to get my in-body scan or whatever um, so that I can see that I'm, I'm going back in the right direction I need to go. And then once I kind of have that figured out again, I stay away from the scale because I don't need to know what I weigh every day. I don't know what I weigh right now. I'm going to guess about 130 pounds. And what is a healthy weight for you anyway? What is a healthy weight for you anyway? I think your best weight is whatever weight you reach when you are living your healthiest life that you actually enjoy. For me right now, I hate to say it, I think about 130 pounds is my healthiest weight. I wanted 120 to 125 pounds to be my healthiest weight, but I don't actually enjoy my life when I'm trying to maintain that number. It's, it's too strict for me. I like to go out to eat. I like to um, have fries once in a while. I like, you know, to have cake at a birthday party. I like to drink <laughs> and, um, right around 130 pounds, I get to do all of that and still like the way I look and feel. So for me, I have found that that's about the number. For the years I tried to fight that, okay? So take the emphasis off of that and put it onto something else. What else can you focus on? What other non-scale victories can you focus on to know if you are going in the right direction? I'm going to name a few. Non-scale victories, more energy. If you feel better, if you are getting up earlier, if you are able to um, sustain your day without thinking, oh my gosh, I need a candy bar and a nap. More energy. That's a non-scale vic victory. That's proof that you're feeding your body right and practicing the right behaviors, moving your body well. Um, inches lost. So few of us actually look at other numbers or take other numbers into account. What if you measured your, your arm, measured your waist, measured your hips, measured your thighs, and then took those measurements? Because remember when I did muscle versus fat? Go back and watch that video. It's on this page in the videos. Um, you muscles denser than fat. So you can have more of it in a smaller space. So you might actually be taking up less room, but that number is not reflecting on the scale. And so you think you're doing everything right. You're fitting into smaller clothes. You've lost your inches, but the scale doesn't say anything. And you ignore all those other signs that you're doing something right. And you only listen to the number on the scale. Crazy. Okay. 
Um, so more energy, inches lost, more reps. You're able to do you know, more reps in less time, or you're able to control your heart rate better when you're working out, or you're able to lift more weight than you used to be able to lift, or you're able to um, just get through a workout with you know, the same workout that you did last year at this time, you're able to get through it without dying. Those are all indications that you have done something right. Passion for wanting to work out. Okay, so in the beginning, sometimes we just do it because we have to do it. We know it's good for us. We know we know that it is there is a benefit to exercise, and we want to see it to lose weight. But sometimes we use exercise as a punishment to punish ourselves for what we ate, so that we can get this reward or the success of stepping on the scale and having the number drop. Okay. What about developing a passion for exercise and how you feel when it's done and what it can do for your body and the, the functionality that it gives you? And um, just, again, the energy. When you develop a passion for exercise, that is a non-scale victory. And that's going to take some time, but gosh, you guys, it is a great place to live, okay? Love and appreciation of healthy food. You know, I'm not going to say I love all healthy food, and I'm not going to say that I don't like unhealthy food. But I am going to say that I love and appreciate how I look and feel when I eat healthy food. And because of that, I choose to eat that most of the time. 80 to 90% of my the food I eat is good for me. Okay. Not just tastes good to me, but good for my body. Okay. Um, when you're in a better mood. Continuously, I can't, when I eat just so bad, like I did over Christmas, I get depressed, I get cranky, I get short-tempered, I get impatient. When I'm eating great and feeling good about myself, and I look in the mirror and I see like my skin is almost like, like I think I'm glowing and I know for sure I'm not pregnant. Um, wow, that puts me in a great mood, okay? Um, the way your clothes fit. I have used the way my clothes fit huge over the years as an indication that I'm doing something right. When my clothes get tight, I know it's time to back off. When my clothes are baggy, I know it's like, hmm, maybe I'm not eating enough. Maybe I'm, um, I think I maybe I've lost muscle. I might need to, you know, hit the, the weights a little bit, you know, harder or whatever. Um, when I can fit into my, my, the same clothes year after year after year after year, and the only reason I get rid of them is because they're out of style, not because they don't fit. That's a huge indication that I'm on the, in, you know, on the right track and moving in the right direction. And that has nothing to do with the scale. I do not need to step on the scale in order to prove that I have done something right. So uh, improved sleep. OK, healthy habits is going to get you improved sleep. OK, um, maybe if, what if you go to the doctor and they cut your blood pressure medication in half or take it off blood pressure medication altogether? You know, so a reduction in your medications. Um, when your doctor go, when you go to the doctor and they're like, what have you been doing? I can't believe your, your cholesterol levels. Holy moly. Wow, good for you. So that is another indication, a non-scale victory. That has nothing to do with your weight, okay? Um, Fewer cravings. Uh, I don't know, guys. The list can go on and on as to other places to look to feel good about yourself. Yet, we still, even though we know better, we never do better. We still start some stupid diet, some fad diet. We still restrict our, our calories to the point of deprivation. We still step on that scale daily to prove our you know, you know, worth and value. And we keep spinning our wheels and losing and gaining and losing and gaining and never getting off that track and moving forward. That's because you're not allowing it. You're not demanding it of yourself. I can sit here and tell you this stuff all day long, but ladies and gentlemen, let's get rid of the scale. Okay. Let's not use it. Let's not use it as a crutch. Use it as one tool in your arsenal to determine. Um, if you are moving in the right direction and when you start obsessing over it and that's all you can think about is that number, get rid of it, get rid of it. Okay. So 
And that's what I want your focus of the day to be, is I want you to make a list of non-scale victories that you can look towards when the scale isn't telling you what you want. And then if you're really serious, if you are really serious about changing your health, body, and fitness for good, go get that scale, throw it out right now, because you really and truly don't need it, okay? You really don't need it. You don't. You just need to change your mind, change your thought process, change your habits, change your behavior, be consistent, master that, and you're going to get the, the exact body that makes you happy. Okay. So that's what I have for you today. Um, tomorrow, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to talk about tomorrow yet, but I will be back with you. I thank you all for listening and uh, I hope you have a great day. Please like and share. Peace.